Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, I'll teach you how to manage the RFQs that is purchase quotations as well as purchase orders inside the purchase module of Odoo 17. So inside this purchase module, you have options like create like options to create an RFQ or even purchase orders. Okay, so as similar to the sale order, it's just the opposite of a sales. So let me show you how to create this RFQ, which is request for quotation as well as once uh, you confirm an RFQ, it becomes a purchase order. So let's see what are the procedures of making this RFQ and making an RFQ to a purchase order. So let's begin. Come with me. So guys, now let's see how to manage the purchase quotation as well as the purchase order. So for that, I'm opening the purchase module and uh, once you open the purchase module, the first thing which comes is the RFQs. So here you have the list view of RFQ. You similarly have the Kanban view, the pivot view, the graph view, the calendar view, as well as the activities regarding the RFQ. So currently I'm not focusing more on the views. Finally, I'll be showing the views. So let's see how to create an RFQ. Okay, so before that, let's go to the list view of RFQ. And here you have details like the reference, that is the uh, purchase order reference. Then you have the vendor, company, buyer, order deadline, activities, source document, total, as well as the status. So status can be RFQ as well as purchase order. Now here, if you click on the menu called orders, you have RFQs, that is request for quotation, as well as purchase order. So the difference is that here in the RFQ section, that is the request for quotation section, you will see both RFQ as well as the confirmed RFQ, which is purchase order. But if you take purchase orders, you will only find the confirmed RFQs. That is, you will only find purchase orders here. And here the status will be the building status of the purchase order. So let me show you how to create a new RFQ. So I'm clicking on new. And here, the first thing which you have to do is choose a vendor. So I'll choose Anita Oliver. Okay. And here you have the order deadline. So what's order deadline? It depicts the date within which the quotation should be confirmed and converted into a purchase order. Okay, so that's the order deadline. Now, as you can see, every field has this field helps over here. Now, similarly, we have the expected arrival, which is the delivery date promised by the vendor. So this date is used to determine expected arrival of products. So you can mention an ar uh, expected arrival date over here. So that will be the date on which the product will be, uh, you know, delivered. Okay. So you, you have this ask confirmation. So before just, or if you are giving one means one day before the arrival of the product, you can simply, you know, uh, ask for confirmation whether the product will be coming or not. By any chance, if it's not coming, means that's what happens, right? So you can see automatically send a confirmation email to the vendor. If I'm giving one day, means one day before the expected receipt date, asking him to confirm the exact date, okay? Just asking for confirmation whether this arrival will be taking place on the given date and here you have delivered to so from here you can choose okay to your company receipts or dropship subcon subcontractor or whoever and then you have the vendor reference which is the reference of the sale order or bid sent by the vendor so it's actually uh, for you know easy identification and all this will be written on top of the product as you can see uh, when you receive the product as this reference is usually written on the delivery order sent by your vendor so it will be there on the delivery order if you provide anything and here you have the blanket order. So if any, you can choose it. So we'll be talking about blanket order in another video in detail. And then here you have to choose the currency. So currently I'm choosing the currency USD itself. Let it be there. Now let's go to the order lines where you have products, other information and alternatives. Okay. So for products, what you have to do, I'm going to add a product. So let it be uh, the ring lock. So I'm confirming it. So that's the variant entries, which you saw right now. Okay. So the quantity I've given is five. The variant I've chosen is big. Okay. And you have the units, the price, the tax and the total amount. Okay. Tax excluded amount and tax included amount is given here. So that's the, uh, that's how you add a product. And you have the other information tab where you have the information regarding the buyer and also the payment terms the, as well as the fiscal uh, position. Okay, and then you have the source document, the inco term and the inco term locations. And similarly, you have one more tab, which is the alternative tabs, which is to create call for tender. Okay, so this is actually a new feature which came in uh, Odoo 16. Uh, so here by creating the alternative vendors, that is if you don't have this product 
if you are buying a product from Anita and Anita doesn't have that product means you will be having an alternative vendor from that person you will be buying. So I'll show you this uh, call for tender also uh, that we'll talk about this call for tender as well as the blanket order in another video in detail. Okay, for so so for the time being, let it be there. Like as you all know, it is just for creating alternative uh, request for quotation to different vendors. Okay, so that's it. And once your basic things are done, let, that is by adding the vendor, adding products, such basic things are done. What you have to do next is if you want to print RFQ, you can simply click on print RFQ. And if you want to send this by mail, click on send by mail. And if you want to cancel it, you have this cancel icon as well as to confirm the order. You have the confirm order. So if I'm clicking on send by mail, what happens is that this will be sent to the person. So here you can see the recipient, which is the vendor, which is Anita Oliver. And you have the subject here and also the body, also the uh, RFQs copy. And simply clicking on send. So you can see RFQ is sent to this particular vendor. Okay. And if you want to resend the email, you can do that. And if you want to print this particular RFQ, that is also possible. And from this stage also, you can cancel it. Okay. So I'm confirming the order. Once you confirm an RFQ, it becomes a purchase order. Okay. So that's done. So once it's done, what you have to do, it's confirmed, right? So you can receive the products then. So receiving the products. So to receive the products, what you have to do is you have to validate this. Okay, so I'm just validating. Okay, so validation is done. As you can see, it's in done state. Now you can go back to the purchase order. And here you can see the create bill icon has become active. Once the validation is done. Now I'm going to create a bill for this purchase order. So here is the bill. I'm going to confirm it. Okay, so the thing is that while you create a bill, what you have to do is mention the bill date. So here is the bill date. And I'm confirming it. Okay, so don't forget to specify the bill date. If you don't specify, means you can't confirm or you can't continue the process. Okay, so the bill is uh, posted right now. And what you have to do is register the payment. So I'm going to create a payment. As you can see here, you have the journal, the payment method, whether it's manual or checks or whatever it is. And then you have the recipient bank account. You can choose the bank account from here. You have the amount here the payment and also the memo. Okay, so I'm going to create the payment. And you can see it's in payment state, the ribbon has come showing in payment. Okay, now you can create a credit note as well as reset it to draft again. Okay, so that's how you confirm or create a purchase order. Okay, so that's the process. Now that's how you created one through RFQs. Now, what's the difference if you create from purchase order? You are going to create directly a purchase order. It's exactly the same. See, so I've gone to the orders, the purchase orders, and then I'm creating a new one. So the process is very same. I'm putting as your interior. So specifying everything over here. So I'm putting a date and the vendor reference or blanket or whatever it is. I'm adding a product over here. So here's the product and the quantity I'm specifying. Okay, unit price five, let it be five. And I'm confirming the order. What happened? It became a purchase order. So it's exactly how you do it inside a RFQ. So I'm re receiving the product and completing the process. Validate it. So validation is done. Now go back to the purchase order. The create bill is active now. Create bill. So specify the bill date. Let it be 29. Confirming it and you can see you have outstanding debits for this vendor. You can allocate them to mark this bill as paid. Okay, now you can register the payment, create the payment and it's done. So that's how you manage your purchase order as well as the RFQs. Now, if you just go to this, uh, sorry, I'll open the purchase again. Here in the RFQ, as I said before, you have different views. So this is the list view. And then you have the card like view, which is Canvan view. So inside each card, you will be having the status, the amount, the vendor's name, the reference, as well as the date. Okay. So that's the Canvan view. Then you have the tabular view, which is the pivot view. So inside the pivot view, you have a table like thing. You can even add measures to it, like the currency date, the bill count, and all. And also you can insert it into spreadsheet. Flipping access is also possible. 
you can expand all and also download the Excel S6 file. Okay. And then you have the graph view of the RFQs. So this is the bar chart. You have line chart as well as pie chart of the same. Here also you can change the measures. Then you have the calendar. So here in the calendar, it shows a calendar like view and under each date which you give to the RFQ or purchase order that will be shown. Okay. Different color denotes to different vendors. Okay. And you can change it based on a day, week, year or even month. And you have the previous and next icon over here. Then finally, you have the activities, which is to schedule an activity corresponding to a purchase order. Okay. So you have call, meeting, emails and all whatever you want, you can schedule it. As you can see, there is three colors in this page, which is red, yellow and green. So red represents to the ones which is already that is the activities which are expired or which are done. Okay. Yellow denotes to the one which are to be done today and green represents the one which are scheduled for future. Okay. So that's the RFQs for purchase order. Also, you have the same views, which is the list view, Kanban view, the pivot view, graph view, calendar and activities. Okay. So that's it. That's how you manage the purchase order and the uh, RFQs. So that's basically how you manage the RFQs as well as the purchase orders. I hope it's clear for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.